Years ago, vendors control what retailers sold. Then about 20 years ago, retailers started dictating what was sold. And if a vendor couldn't comply, they simply went to a different vendor. And starting with the internet, customers started taking control. By being able to do real-time price and product comparison became huge. Now with the virus, the customer has become even more in control. That caused the retailers to have to know and understand their customers at a much deeper level. This video gives you an overview of the level of information required to succeed today. Customer Information in the Modern Era by The Wizard of Paws. Customer information is at the heart of the modern AI business. So what is a customer? Retailers often use the noun customer in many different ways. In the OMG slash arts world, 
a customer has been distilled down to a very specific kind of party. A customer is a party. It's an individual or an organization that assumes the role of a consumer. And we'll have more about that in a minute. With respect to the retail enterprise, this customer exhibits a behavior by purchasing a product or service. So basically, a customer is someone who buys something. OMG slash arts has several customer product relationships in the various standards that are there, starting with the business process model. Now I've taken their model and put it on steroids and you'll see a little bit of that later. But it has the business intelligence component as well, being able to do various KPIs against the customer. Variety of message schemas for communicating between applications in retail. That's critical in the modern agile microservices world. And of course, an ODM, operational data model, which is required for trapping and storing this information in one common format so the, the people at the top can understand how the business is doing. And a data warehouse model, which summarizes the, the ODM information so that the business intelligence can execute against it. And finally, there's the customer consumer to customer lifecycle model. These all cover basically the enterprise architecture component or in effect the information. I've taken that enterprise architecture component and extended it in this model showing how we tie the business strategy to the business architecture or the value streams that support that strategy, which then ties to the business processes, the people, the, the data to execute that strategy with the business intelligence to evaluate the effectiveness of that strategy. In a modern retail agile architecture, data must be aggregated into one common model in order to be properly shared amongst a variety of uses across the enterprise. This is a key component of a modern agile microservices architecture. This helps you get one source of insight into your customers. Typically, each application has the ability to track customer information in their own format. This causes numerous problems across the enterprise when it wants to interact with their customers with one voice. So now let us understand the consumer to customer journey. The consumer represents the association between the retailer and an individual or organization where the consumer is a potential, a current, or an ex-purchaser of goods and services from the retailer. Consumers traverse a set of states as they progress through a life cycle, starting with the population at large. Once the population becomes aware, the, the consumer moves to becoming a prospect. That is somebody who's a potential customer and may be reached through advertising, referrals, or identified through acquired data like mailing lists, prospect links, and the like. They then walk in and land on a page, and that makes them a visitor to your, to your world. Okay. If they stop and hold an item, they then move to becoming a shopper. So a shopper is a visitor that stops and examines merchandise in a way that demonstrates a level of interest to potentially purchase the items. If they select and settle the item, they move to become a customer. So fundamentally, a customer, is, as we mentioned earlier, is someone who completes a purchase. They, they're buying things from you now. After a period of time through attrition, they become an inactive customer. That's a customer that's been dormant for some designated period of time. What's fascinating about this stuff is that the, the timing is dependent on the particular kind of retailer you are. They then move on to become an ex-customer. That's a customer who's been inactive for a very long time and depending on the retailer's criteria, will never become active again. And in the modern internet age, we now have influencers. And these are people who may or may not have any relationship with the retailer but they write reviews, opinions, and rumors that help people move along this customer life cycle. 
we're going to take a little deeper look into the customer. Let's take a look now at a groupings of customer characteristics. These are critical in dealing with today's customer. So we'll start with the demographic view. And here's where we capture information like age, education level, home ownership, and, and other similar kinds of characteristics. Let's move to the geographic view. This is where you capture where a party lives, works, shops, etc. Then we go to the psychographic view. This is where you capture things that indicates what motivates a customer, including lifestyle, values, personality, etc. And these all come together to form the behavioral view, which derives a pattern of actions from the customer transaction history, customer correspondence, customer reviews, and opinions expressed in social set networks and the like. And finally, they result in either customer actions occurring or recording of customer actions. So now let's dig a little deeper into each of the various areas, still keeping it at a fairly high level. So we start with the demographic data, which deals with education, employment status, income range, marital state, what race they are, what life stage are they in, what's their ethnicity, and religion. So now let's take a look at geographic data, what fits in there. Basically, this is where a party lives and works. It includes postal location information, as well as physical co coordinates for geographic information systems. It includes political subdivisions, census tracts, and other location bound characteristics related to a customer. And it also includes the contact information. So now let's take a look at the psych psychographic data. This is where you capture things that indicate what motivates a customer, starting with what is their personality, moving to what is their value attitude lifestyle. This is used to determine different classes of people who have varying values, attitudes, and lifestyle. These people were determined by the resources they had at their disposal, as well as the amount of primary innovation they could accept or create. Values include innovators, thinkers, believers, achievers, strivers, experiencers, makers, survivors. Then we move down to what is their personal values? What is their value system? And what is their lifestyle? So we now aggregate it all into something called a behavioral view. This is where you derive patterns of actions from customer things like transactional history, correspondence, customer reviews, opinions expressed in social networks. The behavior view of a customer is the most valuable view because it reflects what they do. For anonymous customers, there is no other way to characterize them except through observations, classifying, and quantifying their behavior. It includes things like what is their dietary habit? Do they have any sort of disability or impairment? And what are they personally involved in on an activity level? Are they into baseball or, or sewing or whatever? Thank you. My the Wizard of Pod. My name is Richard Halter. Please check out my book, Art for Retail, using technology to turn your consumers into customers and make a profit. It's available on Kindle. Thank you.